Well, hi there. Welcome to another video. As you can probably tell from the title in, on the thumbnail, this is going to be a rather unusual one. Making some booze from bread. But uh, this is an interesting story. Uh, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about it as I start doing my preparations. But uh, I'm going to bounce back initially to the recipe I'm working from, which is uh, a Russian recipe I found. There's a lot on the internet, but there's an awful lot of them say, okay, put some bread in, and put some barley in, and put some sugar in. I wanted to do it without sugar. I wanted to go back, back in time, and to the times when it was made a long time ago. And uh, I found a recipe on a Russian website, I'll put the link in the description, uh, which actually uh, covers this. It says, and the recipe says, use um, two and a half kilos of bread, 500 grams of molten barley, uh, eight litres of cold water, all right? So I decided I wanted to do two, two ways. Now, molten barley has a certain percentage or a certain degree of sugar, all right? So, but I wanted to try and find out whether or not I could do this without the sugar content from molten barley. So I'm going to make up two batches. One batch with amylase and one batch with, uh, with uh, molten barley. And so that's going to be interesting. So I'm going to give you a quick brief rundown on um, a oh, history lesson on actually, on what the story is all about. Going back 6,000 years, um, that was when mankind first started to record uh, their, their carryings on and developments and what have you. And this is going back to the Sumerians in Mesopotamia. Now, Mesopotamia is um, modern day, it is, is called Iraq. But back then, 6,000 years ago, they were starting to actually take clay tablets, put triangular marks on it, and uh, record things for history, which is great. They're one of the first people to do it, the first people to do it. Prior to that, everybody used to put pictures and designs and picture representations and all that sort of stuff. So um, what's interesting, though, what the archaeologists have found, 6,000 years ago, one of the first tablets that was actually made by uh, the Sumerians in Mesopotamia was for the formula for beer. <laughs> it's true, a formula for beer. And I started looking into it a bit more. And back then, they really did like it. And they've been liking it for a long time. Now, I'm going to put up a, a picture of uh, the tablet, which shows you the formula for beer. And uh, I'm also going to put up a picture of a, of, a, of a tablet showing you pictorial representation, which is way before the 6,000 years ago. Uh, pictorial representation of uh, people in, sitting around a table enjoying beer. So, that being said, <laughs> it's interesting, isn't it? So, what I wanted to do is find out a little bit more about it. So, apparently, they actually had a goddess. The goddess's name was Nin Ninkasi, and she was a goddess of beer. <laughs> Speaking of a suburb or an a, a, a organisation working on its uh, merits, eh? <laughs> but, uh, no, she was, a, she was a goddess of beer. But they, were, they really did like the process. Now, being who they were, they decided they wanted to actually uh, record the beer-making process. So they had their master distillers and they had their apprentices, but they actually made up a hymn. Yeah, a hymn, basically, um, to describe how to go about making this beer. It's called the Hymn to Nin Kis Ninkasi. I'll put a link below. Uh, Hinton and Carsey shows the process of actually making these beers. So it's extremely interesting. So anyway, while I'm putting this bread in, in, uh, to, uh, in um, uh, this water, I've, how much water have I got here? I've got um, um, eight litres of cold water. While I'm putting the bread in the water, uh, I'll just tell you briefly why I'm making this difference here. I've got the barley. I'm going to put the barley in the second batch. I'm doing this amylase one first because it happens a lot faster. You now the amylase process is um, get the, the, uh, the, the bread and stuff in here up to a, a big mess. Boil it up to 65 degrees. Stir in the amylase and uh, let it sit for over an hour. Cover it and let it sit for over an hour. 
So that being said, I'm going to break now because obviously you don't want to see me go through and <laughs> do an awful lot more bread. But I'll break now and I'll come back when I'm ready to start putting this on the boil and put the amylase in. Well, it's pretty well close to reaching its 65 degrees now. A couple of things I have to mention. Um, most, most importantly, I actually ended up putting two more litres of water in because it was insufficient. Eight litres was just not enough to actually make this kind of homogenous mess. But um, two more litres, so that's 10 litres total. And uh, I went to a company called Woolworths. Their bakery there proudly advertises the fact that there's absolutely zero preservatives in their bread. That's very important. So I got uh, wholemeal bread with zero preservatives and put it in here. So, oh, and, and last, of course, as you're boiling it, use a flat spoon so you can scrape the bottom of the container constantly. So you can't leave it, otherwise it's going to go and get burnt. So what we're going to do now is we'll have a look at the temperature. Forty-seven fifty-one. We're aiming a bit of steam on the on the lens there. Sorry, we're aiming for sixty-five degrees. We've got it. All right. So turn off the power. Sprinkle in the amylase. Mixed well. All right. It's a rather goopy mess, isn't it? But that's what you expect. We're making a bread porridge to make bread beer. If you make a bread beer with alcohol in it, that goes without saying. <laughs> I'm going to distill it and make bread booze. It might be a, a while down the track yet, but we're going to have two batches going. We're going to have this one going and the one with the molten barley, which has a story of its own, so I'll tell you all about that as we get into doing that. So anyway, um, it's, the amylase is mixed into the top there. I'm going to make sure it's mixed into the bottom. That's good. The enzymes will be going happily down that track now, doing their thing, converting starches into sugars, into glucose. So, right now, I think I've mixed it sufficiently. So, that can go down there. Now, all that's left to do is to let it cool. Let it cool for an hour until it gets to the stage where it's capable of being putting into a fermenter barrel to reach its uh, fermenting temperature, uh, yeast pitching temperature, and away we go. Okay, the day's getting on a little bit. Uh, we've got through to the first end of the first stage. Over here we have the bread uh, settling in a container with the amylase uh, is down to about 55 degrees, so I'm going to give it until tomorrow morning to settle before I give you a specific gravity. We're about to get into the malted barley uh, addition to the second half of the bread that they actually prepared. Now, before I start that, I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. The malted barley I bought as whole barley and just ground it up to a, a flour myself, and I actually asked my um, my home brew shop a little bit of information. I needed to know how to actually uh, relay this to you so you could understand it, and I could understand it really. So they did a bit of research for me and they came up with an, uh, an analysis for me. Diastatic power, or was the ability uh, for uh, malted barley to do its job. It's not kiln dried and it's 
it actually preserves the enzymes. So in other words, it dries in the everyday light, I mean, everyday sunshine. Non-diastatic barley is kiln dried. Now that basically kills the enzymes, but it does preserve the flavour and the sugars. So what you want, if you're going to use barley, malted barley to, uh, uh, instead of uh, amylase enzymes, you want to have diastatic uh, barley. Now, there's different barleys. From what I was able to understand, um, I actually got a pale malt barley, which is used for pale ale. And by this calculator, which I will put in the uh, link below, uh, the diastatic power of this, this uh, pale malt is actually 140, which is getting up there. All right, so it actually goes down to around about 50, 40, 30, lower. But see, it's up there. So it's one of the best diastatic powered barleys which are available. So uh, it's important to ask that question. If you're going to get some, some uh, malted barley to act as an enzyme for your mix, uh, ask about the diastatic power. But better still, you can actually use the link that I give you below uh, to actually find out what it is. So anyway, that's good. Uh, thanks to Mike's Home Brew. I'll put a link to their website below uh, because they gave me, they spent a lot of time actually helping me to understand that, which is great. All right, we're into the final stages. As I said, I used 10 litres of water because I could not get sufficient uh, water uh, into the bread to allow it to emulsify. So uh, 10 litres is much better than the 8 litres was there before. Uh, 2.5 kilos of bread and five, and this time 500 grams of malted barley. And uh, we're gonna, I'm about to put that in. But uh, I think what we need to look at now is, is there's going to be a time frame here. Um, once I put the malted barley in here, I need to heat it up to 38 to 40 degrees, as soon as it hits 40 degrees, I have to turn off the heat and let it sit there for 30 minutes with the lid on. And then once it gets down, uh, the 30 minutes is gone, I then turn on the heat again and heat it up to 50 to 55 degrees Celsius and then turn it off and wait 40 minutes this time. And then after that 40 minutes, turn it on again uh, and heat it up until 60 to 65 degrees Celsius and once again, turn it off, wait another 40 minutes, turn it back on. And then we, we actually increase the temperature to 72 to 78 degrees Celsius. And then once again, turn it off, wait 40 minutes until it's completely done its job. Then it can reach the stage where it can actually start cooling down and be over here. Rather than actually using a natural yeast culture that they use for their breads, I'm gonna be using some just baker's yeast. Um, main, main reason for that being it's good up until about 10% ABV. Now, I'm expecting somewhere between 5 and 8%. Now, in this one here, I'm expecting around about 5 or 6%. This is, the, this is a straightforward um, bread mix with uh, amylase. And this one with the, the uh, malted barley, no, malted, uh, malted grain, I'm going to be expecting up to around about 8% ABV. So uh, now I get to the stage where I simply get the barley, sorry, the malted mix, and we'll put this into our bread mix. Just mix it all in. I got a, a grinder off eBay. I think it cost me about $30, $35 delivered, next to nothing. Um, it's fair enough, it's not the best but I've only used it twice in the last year and a half, so it's served its purpose for me. But um, if you wanted to pick up a grinder yourself, yeah, by all means, I'm pretty well sure your home brew shop would be able to do that for you as well. So, okay, I'm gonna continue mixing this and put it on the stove. And I'll bounce back to you after we've uh, reached the 38 to 40 degree mark.
So getting towards the end of the second day, here's the results of our little journey. Now, first thing that comes to mind when you see this picture is basically both the MLAs and the barley runs both seem to have produced the same amount of liquid. Maybe a little bit less liquid has been produced by the, the barley. But I think that's mainly because the uh, extra 500 grams of barley that was put into the mix is swollen up. But uh, interestingly enough, one of the things that happened, I, I, I did a, uh, a specific gravity test on this. Now, the, on the left, the, um, the bread run with the MLAs resulted in 1,042, and around about 5% ABV, which is roughly what I was expecting. Now, I did the malted barley, uh, a specific gravity of 1,050. It's a little bit less than what I expected. It came in at roughly 6.5% ABV. But what's interesting too, uh, after these things, after these things happen, it looks like there's only a small amount of fluid there. But after you start draining it, I've been draining out the liquid. It's a very long and strenuous process to actually unclog this this cheesecloth and let it drain again and again and again. But at the end of the process, we do have a quite a significant amount of uh, product left, which is going to be put into the the uh, the pitching tanks. So it's very interesting. So um, I'll get a, a, another report for you in a second and show you exactly how much volume we did have. Well, the question of whether or not you can make alcohol from bread seems to have been answered. Well, it looks like it may have been answered. Over here, I have got mm, 13, maybe 13 and a half, 14 litres of wort. Now that's going, that's just, that's going to be actually um, introduced to 25 grams of baker's yeast tonight and it's going to get underway to ferment. So um, yeah, so we came out with a specific gravity of 1050. Very pleased with that. That's uh, about 65 to 7% uh, potential ABV. Now for... Um, a unit which didn't have any sugar. I'm just simply using bread. <laughs> I'm rather impressed by that. Good on you. Well, it's been a fun ride. Uh, I started yesterday morning around about eight o'clock. I was knocking on the door of the bakers to get the bread. It's now around about 6.30 p.m. the next night. So it's been a long road, but um, yeah, I'm gonna put some yeast in this, put it to bed and give you a follow-up in uh, a couple of weeks time. If you like what you've been watching, if you enjoyed what I've been doing, please like, subscribe and share. Um, I really do get a buzz out of uh, putting these together and I'm looking forward to doing an awful lot more. So until then, cheers. Well, the old question of whether or not you can make bread from... Let's try that again. Well, the question of whether or not you can make alcohol from bread has been answered. I've got um, about 23... No, I say... Take three. Well, the question of whether or not you can make alcohol from bread seems to be ab 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 take four